Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is a heavy topic, and we are going to talk about MIPS, millions of instructions per second, as discussed in the last topic. So let's get straight to it, because we have a lot of stuff to talk about. And I'm only going to, as usual, I'm only going to go through the stuff that I think is important and necessary. Uh, so far, we don't have anything that is getting our attention, except let me introduce you to our first code. By the way, as we go through this, we'll be going through codes, some examples, and it will be great if you write them. Because you will understand, it's easy to understand, but when you will try to write it with your own hands, it's more like writing programming with your own hands. And that's not a pleasant thing, let me tell you. So, it's better to write them out. So, straightforward, within the first minute, let's go to our first example. We have F equal to G plus H minus I plus J, which is a very simple code in C. And if you're like, I don't know C, it's the same thing you do in Java. Uh, assume that you have an int F, and then you write this line f equal to g plus so that's java and c is the same thing so how do you do it in mips you see i'll show you some stuff over here and the color i choose today is red this over here these three are variables and if even if you don't know anything about programming you can guess that this will do addition this will do addition as well and this will do subtraction here t0 is kinda like t and this this is the destination you call this a destination which is rd register destination and we'll talk about these complicated things later but for now just understand that this is rd and g and h is exactly these two things g and h so you're like writing t equal to g plus h which is not possible actually because just right we wrote t over t0 over here we have to write these as t0 equal to s0 or s1 plus s2 i'll show you one later but for your understanding this is what they did and then we got rid of this part then we have to do this part so take another one variable t1 and you add i plus j so i plus j so this is the this this part is done and this part is done and the final thing to do is subtract them so we do sub f and f will do t0 which is this one and t1 which is this one two source rs and rt one destination two variables and then you store the result to uh, another variable which is known as rd or the destination this is a very simple mips execution and now we'll get go to our discussion let's see so register operands are some theoretical stuff it's a 32 into 32 bit register that means you have 32 and numbered 0 to 31 just like the binary set you know in C20 we also did this so you start from 0 and end at 31 and a 32 bit data is called a word so a word is equal to 32 bit and 8 bytes so then what we what do we have here and here this this is the t0 t1 these are temporary values you remember in the last slide i showed you t0 equal to g plus h now you cannot write g plus h in mips what you write is these variables s0 s1 s2 and don't forget about the dollar sign before every single variable okay so keep note of the design principles now let's see another one the same one but this time in a complete MIPS code so last time we used G plus H but now this is a real code so you add T0 and F uh, F G H I J is in S0 S1 S2 S3 and S4 respectively 
you will be given the code you, the in the question they will tell you so you don't have to worry about okay what will I take s0 s1 or s2 they will tell you for example here f is s0 so this is s0 I'll just explain one code and then everything else will be easy for you g is s1 h is s2 i is s3 and that leaves j with s4 so first we have to add s1 and s2 g plus h this part first execution of this part that is done and we store it on a variable called t0 that is not happening over here we are not doing something like that in c but we are doing something like that in mids okay and then you have and uh, the same thing for this segment s3 and s4 so you write two sources s3 s4 and then save them on a temporary value t1 so t0 has this though this is t0 and this is t1 now you can kinda understand the thing it's uh, the same thing except this time it's a subtraction so just use sub and then store it in a save value as 0 t0 t1 now you may say why didn't we use t over here and why are we using s over here it doesn't matter that much cause t is just temporary values and as a saved values it will be saved in your register so it doesn't really matter what you use but for the final result you have to use save because you don't need t0 so once this process is done this t0 will disappear because it's temporary you don't also need this t1 once this subtraction is done this will disappear but if you used t4 or t5 over here then after you get out of this instruction this whole set is an instruction then t4 will be deleted then you will lose the value that's a problem and this is s1 s2 s3 s4 because they are already saved because somewhere in my code I installed int g int h int i int j similarly I need the result of f but I don't need the result of g plus h and i plus j I don't need them so that's why I'll keep them in temporary values because all they need to do is give me the actual summation and when I get that I will store that in a s, s value which is f s0 which is given in the question that's how you do it so I took my time explaining this I hope you will not face any problem in the next codes so now anything here like I mentioned that you have 8 bit uh, now each instruction is a word and they are aligned in a memory that means after one word you will have another after one word you have another so if I did instruction 1 then immediately instruction 2 is there after instruction 1 which is 32 bits away so that's uh, these things will become more clear once we go to it so as mentioned we have 32 bits now I'm going to write something very important one byte you have to remember the eight already know this right eight bits you already know this congratulations you're a genius and so 32 bits will be four bytes four eight thirty two so four bytes per word that's the idea you see so every four bytes you have a word because it gives you 32 bits so since we have 32 x 32 so my next instruction is the 33rd bit or you can say 32nd because we started from zero I, I think none of these things are making any sense so it will later so the question now arises we have an array system a8 how do you do this this can be a0 this can be a t we can add these two in a t and get the answer out of it but what about this so what I want to show you is 
to get here you have to first divide this and let me show you an easy way to of doing this first you divide 8 uh, sorry you don't divide you multiply 8 with 4 why 4 this is the explanation 4 bytes per word okay because 0 has 4 bytes 1 has 4 bytes, 2 has 4 bytes, 3 has 4 bytes, 4 has 4 bytes, 5 has fi 4 bytes, 6 has 4 bytes, 7 has 4 bytes. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's why we are doing 8 into 4. Hey, we started, uh, why not 8? Because we started from 0. So if you multiply this, then we can reach the index 8 because each index has 4 bytes I'm, I'm saying this again each index has 4 bytes and so if we are going to go to the 8th index we need 8 into 4 bytes and that's how we got 32 over here now hold on a second homie where did you get LW what is that um, this is actually a load because you're not doing any kind of addition over here this value a of 8 is already there so you need to load that to your register it is sitting there and you need to call it and that's what we do with LW we'll discuss these functions later for now just understand that this is used to load load word you see and you will load it in a temporary value because you don't need to store it in a S because it is already saved on the RAM so you have to store it in a temporary value and then you just add those two s2 which is h uh, like it is mentioned over here t0 is the value you just took which is a8 and then you add them and save them on s1 okay and remember that I add multiply 32 to the base register what do you mean by base register base register address is s3 a in S3 this is given over here as you can see here it is A this is S3 the multiplication is done by the base address if I clear it out for you it's much beautiful now this or the part this is one part this is another part and this is another part I think you get this now and we're going to increase the speed if you have questions you can ask in the comment section below okay here's another one now it's more tricky not only I have one uh, I have to access one over here I also have to access one over here it's the same old thing so what are the addresses you have H uh, don't look at the code look at uh, look over here H is S in S2 and A is in S3 so I have A over here I have A over here that's all I need. I need to know. Now, 8 into 4 gives you 32. We already did that. And 12 into 4 gives you 48. That's something new. I never knew. I have learned something new, which is 12 into 4 is 38. Oh, it's 48. Anyways, 48 and 32. I don't think I have to write this, but I still did. Because later we'll go on a good speed. So you already know this part. We already executed this. That you s load the a8 value and then you add and save it on a temporary value now why temporary value because I'm going to store it on the RAM here I'm going to store it over here you can also use S over here but that's completely unnecessary it's not wrong to use S over here but it's better not to okay and you may say hey you use T0 over here how can you use T0 over here again it's the same thing because I loaded T0 over here and I'm saying that add s2 to t0 this is t0 and I'm saying add s2 to t0 and that is uh, exactly what I'm trying to do so it's why do I have to open a uh, west another temporary index you know since I'm going to store it over here with this so load word is LW and store word is SW same thing store word and what it does is this loads and this stores you know this is white and this is black the opposites so that's very simple 
now let's go to our memory now you're saying okay storing on where do you, where are you storing we are storing it on a memory let's give give you some theory lessons all the work we are doing with the register is the register but there is also the ram where we are storing and loading from that's called memory that's actually the ram so register is faster than RAM but is small in size and RAM is slower than register but it has it is big in size and it is slower also okay now oh these are the things I told you same thing so let's go to it okay immediate operands okay homie I understand that you can add variables like G plus H what if I write S equal to G plus 10 this is not a variable 10 is a constant right G is a variable you can hold anything how, how are you going to handle this we're going to handle this by something called add I you did add and now you're doing add i which is an i type instruction you don't have to know what it means what you need to know is that it can take constants as one of the source we will discuss this later for now let's just see okay if i want to add a constant i'll have to use add i where i can send 4 or 10 directly if it was s plus uh, g plus 4 then i can send 4 directly i can send 10 directly okay and S3 and I'm going to add that to S3 so so this this part will be if I come re uh, what, what should I call it reverse compile it then it will be more like S equal to S plus 4 S is the same thing so S3 S3 anyways but there is no sub I so you have add i so you are expecting okay so if i am doing s minus 4 then i'll just add a sub i no there is no sub i that's very important no subtract immediate all you have to do is just put a minus with it so if you just say s minus 4 then that will be subtraction but you don't have a uh, instruction sub i okay okay that's all now let's move on this is a friend who you helps you to move between registers suppose you have something on F and you want to put it on G so F is equal to 10 and you want to say G is equal to F okay so if G is equal to F then there is no addition over here so if this is T2 and this is S1 what will I write in my third if I write s1 s1 then both of them will be added and if I don't write anything then that's invalid that's when I use 0 so it's more like a g equal to f plus 0 which is same as g equal to f basically you see okay that's we're done now let's see a figure of that MIPS register. Let's hear you do. Now we are talking. This is the source one, you know, S1, S2, whatever we write. This is source two. This is the destination, as I keep telling you. And this is where we write data. Write control. Source one data, source two data. I think it's better to discuss this later when we'll be talking about data paths. So let's skip it for now. Unsigned binary num integers, you already know that. So what you need to know over here is just that it has a range of 0 to 2n minus 1. Uh, these are not important. Okay, this is one thing I want to show you over here that one is for negative numbers so numbering number start with if the number is signed then it will and it starts with one 
then they are negative and if a number is signed and it starts with 0 then they are non negative so the most positive number is 1 and all positives and the most positive number is one, 0 and all negatives ok not so important actually but I still went to it mm, sign extension now this is something important so you have a value of 8 bits but you need to extend it to 16 bits then you can put zeros to extend it for example if I tell you I have 10 but you need to give me a value which is 6 bits but if I add 5 zeros over I make it 6 digits then the number changes because it, it ha from 10 it has became I don't know 1 lakh maybe yeah the value changed I can do that but if I do this it's just same as 1 0 this is what you will say sign extension so adding zeros which doesn't change the value okay that's what they did over here so here were there are 8 bits over here and they extended it with zeros and ones so that the value doesn't change unsigned values are extended with zeros but for signed values th that's a different implementation so what you need you already know about add i which adds a constant lb is load byte and lh is load half word we'll talk about that veq bne are branch equals we'll also talk about that no need to think about them now and yes we'll talk about them in the in this video anything over here mm, not really okay this is a very important part so there are three types of instructions R, I and J three types of MIPS instructions first we're talking about R and this is the format of R you need to check that you know that every instruction is 32 bits so let's check it 5555 five, five, five gives you 20 and 66 six gives you 12 so 20 plus 12 is 32 okay we are okay with that part OP is the operation code op code which will tell you okay you have to add or okay you have to sub or whatever RS is the destination oh I mentioned that as RD right my bad anyway it doesn't matter though not ma that much at least so this is the destination hey no I was right RS is the source as you can see first source registered number that's RS RT is the second source registered number so you can say for example you have T0 T1 over here RD is the destination where you will save so this will be an S0 just an example okay shamt is for shift amount it's zero for now because we are not doing any shifting over here hey what's the shift homie well we'll talk about that yes. and function it's function code it extends the opcode for some advanced functions well we don't need that now so these three are the parts currently in our discussion and we will include him as well and that's more for okay, so that's an R type instruction pretty busy has a lot of things in it and now let's see an example you have S1, S2 and you are going to save it on T0 ok it's the same thing so we are storing it in a temporary value and the values are 17, 18, 8, 0, 32 so the function is the is add you write add right so you write add over here and opcode is always 0 for R type remember this opcode is always 0 for R type opcode is always 0 for R type and then if you convert it into binary it's the this is a really deep computer stuff over here if you understand it if, if you have heard me so far then you probably understand it and this is actually the compiled language anyways 
now we'll have a little discussion about head status and um, this system you have base 16 you already do this uh, did this in numerical stuff you know 230 so one thing only over here four bits per hex digit so that means if you have eight that's your limit because 4 8 32 and you have 32 you cannot take more than that that's the only thing you need to note over here nothing else now we'll talk about another type I type whoa it's very different and much easier right so what is missing over here there is no shift champed there is no function and there is no RD wait there is no RD well RT is uh, sometimes it acts as destination and sometimes it can be source so it's ambiguous you can say if I give you an example of RT we remember writing LW something and something so this was the array S3 or something, I forgot to write that. So, this 10 will go here, this will be empty, and then you have this over here. The address, and this 10 over here, whatever. There's lots of way. I'll show you an easier one actually. Makes uh, It will help you understand. Add i, right? Add i. I'm skipping the dollar signs. T, S1, S2. No, not S2. 100. So T1. So T1 will be RS, S1 will be RT, and 100 will be the constant, and it can also be address of other. That's all. Nothing more. So this is an I type, and I'll show you the R type again so that you can differentiate. This is R type. See the RD, shamped and function, and if you combine all of them and make them a constant or register, then it becomes I type. Okay, and we are all types can be different, not zero. Just like R type, it's always zero. Here, this is an easy example the loading, storing, load and store. These are very basic I type functions. Then you also have add I. Uh, I already explained this. I have four. So if you go through four bits, then you can reach the destination. For example, 24. If you want to multiply it, you will have to multiply 24 by 8, which gives us 3. Now we are talking. These are instructions, people. You have to memorize them. SLL stands for Shift Left Logical. SRL is for Shift Right Logical. What on earth is Shift? We'll talk about that. And as you can see, there are some compile symbols shown over here. You are probably familiar with this at least. And you can see that it is almost the same. Almost. Except this one. Everything is the same. And you can do and, you can do or, you can do non, just like we do in the program. We'll see examples. Let's talk about this shift. Shift left, which is an art type function. Shift left, we have one zero one zero one zero. To left.
is shift right logical example sorry I'm quite, quite sure of it this is uh, one zero one zero and this one zero will become zero zero that means actually we removed it. we got rid of this part this is an easy way to example but this doesn't happen in maps, in maps it is actually uh, shift left will make you multiply and one will help you divide we'll see that not more complicated at all let's deal with these ones first and how can you use and yes as simple as for example you have t2 and t1 you want to hand out these two okay so you can clearly say okay three registers that means this is an r type instruction so and one 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 will give you one one and end of zero zero one one will give you zero zero okay so this is how you use that simple as that or is the same thing which does the function of the or nor is uh, why is there a zero over here because if you do zero then you will get T0, T1 and 0, 0. If you use NOR, you will get the opposite. Here, like you get over here. This is uh, dealing with these two. And since we don't need a third register over here, we'll just put it 0. Like we always do. Conditional operators, which also brings us to... Uh, discussion of J type instruction. For some reason the slide completely skipped J type instruction. So I'll have to show it to you myself with my Hebrew handwriting. <coughs> Let me draw one J type. It only has two things. One the opcode OP as usual and this is the address nothing more nothing less and the address is 26 bits address is 26 bits and the op code is 6 bits guys I know you cannot understand anything you'll have to imagine things with your own mind that I am writing this you have to imagine that this is OP even though it I don't know what letter this is but you have to imagine that this is OP and you also have to imagine that somewhere over here address is written believe me it is written I swear it is written it is written somewhere over here address and it is 26 bits thank you for understanding anyways so branch equals RSRT and then if it fails go to L1 what on earth are you talking about what I'm saying is if in Java you have a case which is if RS equal to equal to RT if conditions okay but if we face something which is equals we will actually use B and E and if we say a face something which is not equal then we will use B E Q why is that I will show you with an example and J will help you jump from one address to another. Why is that necessary? Because normally what do we do? Instruction 1, instruction 2, instruction 3, instruction 4. Suppose we have a scenario where instruction 1, if something something, you will have to skip instruction 2 and 3 and go to 4 directly. But MIP doesn't understand that. He will go sequentially. That's when you use J. So you say if you say J4, I'm just writing for you to understand J4, then at 1, after he finds J4, then he will just go straight to J4. And 2, 3 will be skipped. Just like if and else. Let's see a real example. Here is a code which is uh, which has a new function and also an else function. See I told you that if you see a condition where it is equal equal then you will have to use that branch not equals to. What this means is if S3, listen to me now, if S3 which is 
f g f is s0 g is s1 that means h is s2 i is s3 and j is s4 you once again you have to imagine that i am writing this thing if s3 and s4 is not equal not equal branch not equal then go to l now notice when will we go to l if i and j is not equal right because if i and j is equal then we will do this and if i and j are not equal then we will go to else that is exactly what we are saying that if s3 and s4 are not equal then go to else so this will not work if they are equal if they are equal what will we do add s0 which is f and we add s1 and s2 which is g and a and store them in s0 which is f as you can see over here and j exit leave this is not a loop so just exit exit will be somewhere for example if this is instruction 1 2 3 4 five exit will be something like j5 so you will skip else and then go to exit directly okay and if it is not then branch not equals has the ability to go to else from here to directly then after that then we'll see this later okay so that was a good piece of brain now let's see